Hi, this is Samina Sheikh here, and with me today I have Ram Gopal Verma and Pooja welcoming both of you on Mirchi. So I saw the trailer. The trailer looks quite interesting, quite impressive, and quite different. I must say, it's quite different as compared to the kind of films you have done. You have presented someone like her who is doing martial arts and all. What was your idea while naming this film as Ladki and the concept behind this one? See, Ladki I named uh, primarily for two reasons. One reason, uh, very, very ironically uh, or funnily enough, the script has a lot of scenes when. Uh, like the antagonists or maybe the uh, some the, the cops, they they quite shocked with uh, what what this character does in the film. It's a ladki, it's ladki na sa kya? What? So this is an unbelievable thing that a, a woman can do something mm. like that, mm. you know. So in my mind, it initially started as ladki, like as a with a question mark, mm. and then we got used to that as as a, as a mm. title. But uh, I felt, and uh, at the end of the day, that is the point. Like you know, you always look at a ladki as a weaker sex in terms of their strength, in terms of the way they can deal with the men's man's world, mm. and uh, the fact that you always think there's a limit to what a girl can do mm. uh, in, so in a society. Mm. But the, the but the point is like uh, to quote Bruce Lee, he said, "No limit should be your limit." Yeah. I mean, mm. Now that inspiration can be taken both by men and women, or anybody for that matter. True. You know. So in that context, uh, that what you traditionally or or you kind of believe for a long time that this is not what something a girl can do. The mm. fact that Pooja's character can do that, mm. you know, I thought uh, to use the word "ladki," which is normally meant to be in a weaker sense, mm. you know, mm. that to come out in contrast to the toughness which uh, Pooja showed in the film. That is where I think this this has come from. But at the same time, also you know, Pooja, you know, doing such a role, which is not that you know, it's quite aggressive also, you know, and trying to control your temper, dealing with so many men around you, and doing the martial arts. How was it for you? And especially when I get to know that you are, you know, someone who knows martial arts. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I just feel like you, you see me doing martial arts, and uh, that raw action is there. But in real, real life, I don't promote or support. Any kind of violence, so this is just uh, for the cinematic effect. In real life, I'm very calm and very poised person. So whenever that action girl is required out of me, I, I you know uh, perform in certain way. At the same time, even you know, RG, we have seen the kind of films you have made, and you have always tried to portray. The girls in a very strong role, be it Urmila Matondkar, be it you know Antara Mali, be it Jira for that matter, the roles are very strong, and you always try to launch new faces. So when you launched her, when you tried to get her, uh, you know, in the debut, what was on your mind? You see, first of all, I'm not sure I, I like to use the word launch, mm. but that has never been my intention. I'm, I'm looking mm. for someone who can. Fit the nearest to what I have mm. in my mind uh, as far as the script is concerned, mm. with all the people you mentioned. But this is special because, see, I mean, uh, to start with uh, the origin of this whole film is come from my, my obsession for Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. I've seen every Bruce Lee film multiple times, twenty, thirty times, and not just about the fighting; it's his thought process, it's about uh, his de his demeanor, his intensity, just his very presence kind of makes you feel mm. a vibrance in the air. Mm. So I wanted to capture that as a central context of this film. So for which I needed a, a, a actor, obviously, because it's cinema, and then I need martial arts. Mm. Now, most of the time when actors learn martial arts, whether it's males or females, they do it for fitness purpose. Yeah. They're, they're not really martial artists in the sense of the word. Mm. Uh, but I wanted to do the fights realistic, and there won't be any wire work or VFX or dupes or mm. anything what they technically use in the film industry. Mm. So to get a martial artist who can actually pull it off in real time without mm. the aid of anything, mm. I I sent a lot of mails to some martial arts institutes from from Calcutta to Delhi to in the south and all that. Mm. But in return, uh, whatever I got in terms of pictures or in terms of videos of their skill, mm. wasn't really working because um, there has to be a camera friendly face. Mm then there has to be suitability to the character because the film is technically a love story in the mm. sense she, her obsession for Bruce Lee and then there is a guy who obsessed with her 
and he thinks that uh, her obsession for Bruce Lee is going to harm her. It is going to damage her or destroy her. Mm. So it's like a strange love triangle mm. in, the, in the context. So I needed uh, a girl who also works in a love story. Okay. Yeah. Mm. So it's a very difficult combination to get all these three, which, yeah. which, which I failed. Mm. Then almost when I gave up on the idea, when someone recommended it to me that this girl called Pooja in, in Pune, mm. and uh, I, I heard great things about her fighting skills, and she's expert in Taekwondo. Mm. So then I got my production people to get in touch with her, and she came along with her dad. Mm. And once she gave me a demonstration in my office, and the moment I saw her, I was convinced mm. I got my Bruce Lee. Wow. How does it feel, you know, getting the compliment from his end, being called Lady Bruce Lee in a way? Uh, I feel extremely lucky. I mean, it just, it's, the entire journey has been really, you know, a dream come true for me, working with Sir and, uh, you know, in, in the very first film, uh, getting an opportunity like this, it's just, you know, like unreal. Feeling really surreal right now. Also, the kind of films you have made and, you know, the subjects have been quite different. At the same time, you know, I would say, you know, the, when it comes to uh, leading such, you know, heroic roles or also, you know, mafia roles for that matter, you have excelled in that. And now when you're doing something like this, which is, you know, at par, at par level and, and quite different, what made you and what keeps on making you experiment with the genres you keep on experimenting with? See, the point is, I mean, I'm a guy who wants to be all the time feeling an excitement with something new and only something new excites you because you kind of get familiar with what you've done and uh, then it stops moving you. It always it should make you feeling inquisitive and how do I do this? How do, how do I recapture in 2022 what uh, made such a big impact on me in 1980 yeah. when I first saw Bruce Lee? You know? yeah. Now then, for me to understand the essence of what I saw and to recapture it with the woman, mm -hmm. you know, and then, then I create a character. What, how will she sit? How will she stand? And mm -hmm. what speed will she speak? You know, and how would her reaction be in the context? Now, this is what the whole thing is. So the same thing I could have had when I made Ranila. Mm -hmm. See, when I was trying to recapture the magic of the sound of music and... Uh, the old westerns, which are uh, in, the, in the 60s westerns of Hollywood, that is what I tried to do. Mm. And then uh, same thing with Satya, what he did, uh, what moved me about Godfather, mm. you know. Mm. So likewise in Ladiki, I'm trying to recreate what made me feel about Enter the Dragon and the, and the, and the Way of the Dragon, yeah. And somewhere do you also feel, because your feel, your, you know, whatever movies you have made, whatever films you have made, it had that mass appeal. So when you're, you know, trying to try something, a different subject, and you have having, you know, a young actress, you're having a new fresh face, you know, somewhere do you feel that, you know, it will have a different kind of audience also, you know, welcoming this kind of a film? See, for, to start with that, you know, see, the point is the so-called usage of the word fresh face. Mm. There's no such thing as a fresh face, no. Mm. Either there's a face you're familiar with yeah. and even stardom is n about not having a fresh face yeah. in, in a way if you look yeah. at it but then again at the same time every star also was a fresh face at some time mm. in life that's what people conveniently <laughs> forget you know yeah. Yeah. now so for me the most uh, important thing i think is in think is uh, uh, in in terms of it works in totality it is not just the face it is not just the body mm. you know just because a very pretty face and if your body is not right, it doesn't work or reverse, you know, or reverse yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Most extraordinary figure you can have, the face might not work True. sometimes. True. So, and then there is a question of the sensibility of people. Mm. All audience will not like the same person. Mm. Everyone will have the different taste, True. which is what the whole star discrimination things uh, come, yeah. comes mm -hmm. about, you know. True. In Ladiki, I was very particular. Also, I had a certain visual thing to it, you know. When I saw Bruce Lee, when uh, he, showed, he, he, he fights without his shirt, mm. to see his muscles rippling, mm. for me was the equally important thing compared to what his fighting skill is. True. Because it is the perfectness of his body mm. which makes you believe that actually he can do that. True. Mm. If Bruce Lee was overweight, mm. and if he was really equally a good fighter, I don't think he would have become an icon. Mm. You, know, you know what I'm saying? So now, now Pooja comes from a very conservative middle class family. Mm -hmm. So when I initial, my initial discussions with her, because mm -hmm. obviously 
uh, being a very shy and uh, home girl, though she looks like that on screen, I kind of uh, told her this whole thing. Now, if you have developed your body to such physical perfectness, mm. if I don't have that, I think it is not going to show them. Mm. Her body for me is equally expressing what she's feeling in her face, or mm. what she's feeling in her soul. True. Now, every part of her body actually makes a statement, True. which is the reason I think I shot a song, uh, sorry, a fight sequence in a bikini. Mm -hmm. Probably I don't think anyone in the world would have shot something like that. If you are, I challenge you to go through the internet and check out even one fight like that. Mm. See, in the past, they were, in China, there were female uh, martial arts film. Uh, one of the things I remember is called the Haiki Girl. Mm. But then there is also the, um, whether it's in the US, mm. they were just bits, like items, like mm. James Bond fights with the girl in a, a view to a kill, for example, mm. or some bits and pieces. Or there are films on boxing, like Muhammad Ali's uh, uh, daughter, mm. uh, Laila, or something else happening. But just a full-blown visual spectacle like how Bruce Lee designed, mm. how to show martial arts. Mm. That is something never been done. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even in Minicom, it's talking about a real-life boxer. There is no visual spectacle there. True. You know? yeah. So I wanted to make a painting out of Pooja's body mm. and her fighting skills. Mm. And that uh, will be made, I mean, mostly because of her ability, mm. and then uh, cinematic application of uh, music to composition, of, to photography, to uh, all kinds of things. When it comes to fighting skills, even your fighting skills are quite equipped on social media. Uh, your tweets, <laughs> your tweets make a lot of noise for that matter, you know, and you always, you know, some, many a times you land up, you know, in trouble. You know, how do you manage yourself? In such a situation, the difference between Pooja's fighting skills and mine, yeah. in my fighting, they can't come through the phone <laughs> to beat me. <laughs> Neither can I do that. So it is more like I, mm. I like to irritate people. That's actually my main so reason. So virtual, virtual fight. Virtual, virtual fight. <laughs> yeah. I don't fight actually. No. I just throw the punch and keep quiet. Yeah. And I never let their punch come because I don't look at the tools. <laughs> and recently, yeah. but you landed in a legal tussle also, you know, because. That's okay. I mean, that happens all the time with me. At the same time, you know, RGV, you had to, if you had to remake any of your films, you know, made in the past, which one would that be? I want to remake Aag. Ah. Yeah, the reason for that is I tried to remake Shole mm. and became Aag. So if I remake Aag, it might become Shole. That's my theory. <laughs> yeah. <Wow>. <laughs> That's <laughs> a very good theory, I yeah. must say that. And after, after Ladki, what is going to keep you busy with? I'm definitely making Ladki too. For sure. wow. With the same yes. people, uh, the, the Chinese people and uh, the, Now see, the, the another incredible point about this is, now when I showed the footage of Puja, the test mm. footage to the Chinese come guys, I sent them actually mm. to, to Shenzhen. Mm. They immediately came here to Bombay yeah. and they after they saw the whole thing and they, they came on the script and that's when they joined uh, the Indo-Chinese production. Yeah. And now it's uh, releasing in more than 40,000 screens in China. So everybody is zapped with words because China is actually the home of martial arts. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's where martial arts are born. Mm -hmm. Bruce Lee to Jackie Chan to Donnie Yen to Jet Li, all of them came from there. Mm -hmm. In spite of that, they are fascinated with Pooja. I, I personally think the reason is why we did it with Bruce Lee. Mm -hmm. To see an exotic yeah. China's, Chinese face mm -hmm. in the rest of the world, it was mm -hmm. like a, if, uh, if Enter the Dragon had an American, mm -hmm. I'm not very sure the film would have been such a big hit. You know? yeah. So like as you see an Indian face in their context of what they invented, mm -hmm. I think they are finding that uh, like a unique uh, experience is what my, my analysis of it is. Also, you know, your film company was such a good film, you know, even now if I go and watch it, it had a different impact altogether. So if you had to make the film with the same cast, would you do that? I mean, I honestly find... Uh, you see, when you as a person is watching, it's very different from my mind state when I made the film. Mm -hmm. So that's 20 years back film. Okay. My understanding of the underworld is very different at that time. Now it is far higher. Mm -hmm. Now if I make it, that doesn't mean I'll make it better. I'm not saying that. I'll make something different, yeah. which might be liked or not liked, I don't know. Yeah. You know? But I think it's, uh, it's a very... Uh, I mean, a lot of people won't understand, and I also understand why they won't. For example, if, if I make uh, Shiva today, yeah. I was fresh out of college, and I know what happens in college. Mm. But now I find somebody beating with a cycle chain very silly. So I won't be able to make it with uh, 
those characters are too less in comparison to the people I met now, I, I experience now. So that's how I see it. Yeah. And also, do you somewhere feel that the kind of films you have made, it's quite difficult for any other director to even adapt? Like, as I said, like, you know, the genre which you have adapted, you know, even if someone tries or experiments that way, they fail. You know, many directors have tried, like, even if they have to make a film on Underworld for that matter, it doesn't reach to that, you know, high octane level as, you know, as you have for that matter. See, I, I'm not speaking for myself. The most important is, I think, for one to understand it, it is not about the filmmaking skills, it's not about uh, cinematic application, it's for your understanding of the psyche. Like, I remember reading a line uh, of. Uh, uh, Martin Scott said, uh, Mario Puzo said about Godfather, the writer of the original mm. uh, novel of Godfather. Mm. He said, you can't connect, uh, I mean, to a man who can shoot someone in cold blood, mm -hmm. but you can connect to a man mm. who makes spaghetti, mm. you know. So there's a scene in Godfather. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this guy is making spaghetti and they're discussing a murder suddenly makes the murder real. Mm. So in yeah. Satya, when Viko Matre gets nagged by his wife, that's what which makes it real. It's not the shooting part. Yeah. So a guy, like anybody else, can be nagged by his woman, which happens to most of the people in the auditorium. They connect that reality to the actual unreal aspect of the gangster world. Yeah. Nice. yeah. So this is, when I understand this, hmm. from my reading of Mario Puzo or whatever else it is, I absorb that into me. Hmm. Like I remember a lot of police officers never used to believe that I don't know the underworld hmm. when I made Satya. Yeah. I said simple thing, first of all everybody thinks a very realistic film. How many people saw the underworld guys? How will you know it is real? True. You are connecting to the characters. The yeah. relatability of the character is a point. If Viku Matra is not a gangster, mm. if he was an engineer, also he'll be aggressive. That is that don't get mixed between mm. what they do and what they are as people. True. So the people you should relate to and then you relate to whatever else they're doing. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your lovely time and all the very best for this one for Ladki and I'm hoping Ladki 2 also happens but this one looks quite good. So thank you so much for your lovely time. Thanks. Subscribe to Fahimirchi for more Bollywood updates.